Well, I'm holding in my hand a book with a very unusual title, The Return of the Kosher Pig. And Jody, can you read all that in Hebrew right there? No, I cannot. Why not? Well, same reason you can, because we don't speak Hebrew. <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> You're just the smartest girl and the prettiest. Well, we are so delighted to have Rabbi Itzhak Shapira here with us today, and we'll get him to read what was written in Hebrew. Let's welcome him to the program. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Okay. Now, we are doing our best to pronounce Itzhak. Itzhak. Ak. Ak. Yeah. So you got to have a good cold <laughs> to be able to properly speak Hebrew. Is that correct? That's it. Right, That's... Can, you know, we're going live into uh, Israel right now. Could you send a, a greeting in Hebrew? Absolutely. I would be happy to. Bruchim abaim b'shem Adonai Eloi Avraham, Eloi Itzhak, Eloi Yaakov. Welcome in the name of the Lord, in the name of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Wow. Joe, did you understand all that? The shalom part. <laughs> you understood the shalom and part? Adonai. Adonai. Yes, yes, you got that. All right. <laughs> well, we're so delighted that you're here, and I want to hear uh, about your testimony before we talk about the book, because that would then make it more interesting to people. It says, The Divine Messiah in Jewish Thought, Rabbi Itzhak Shapira. Okay, so... You used to live in Israel, is that right? I was born and raised in Israel. All right, so you're an Israeli citizen. Of course, yes. Well, well <laughs> great. I want to be. How can I become one? I want to apply for Israeli citizenship. We should. We've invested enough in Israel. They should make Joni and me honorary <laughs> citizens for sure. Tell us about being raised up. What part of Israel? I was raised up in the Sharon Valley. Okay, the Sharon Valley is known for its oranges. As a matter of fact, I remember walking through the orange groves to school, and by the time I get to school, I smell like oranges. Wow. That, that are, is, the, are the oranges there big, and are they, they really are, sweet? They are famous for their oranges, absolutely. And I was raised up in, you know, uh, our, my generation, the first generation, in essence, that was born in Israel. Before us, before 1948, most of the people came from different, different yeah. places. So my mother is a Holocaust survivor. She came from Eastern wow. Europe. And my father... Is the exact opposite. They came from Iraq, from Baghdad. This is Sephardic, which means they're Spanish descended. So we are, I am a clash of the culture between the Sephardic, which are very, very warm, very you know, jumpy people, to the Ashkenazic, the Russian, the European, who are very much more reserved. So I'm, I'm getting the jokes on both sides. So your parents <laughs> were opposites. The opposites. And I, I just uh, saw where Spain is realizing how they messed up in 1492 when they expelled the Jews from That's their right. country. And uh, that was Ferdinand and Isabella, shame on you. But anyway, now Spain is finally after uh, how many years? 500, 600 years trying to rectify that. And they're saying that anybody that can prove that they were descendants that's can right. become Spanish citizens. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. My family, you know. So uh, you could be a Spanish citizen. Maybe if I go way, way back, yes, potentially. Well, so tell us, so were you raised uh, up in I, an I, Orthodox I, home? I was raised up in what's called Shomrei Mitzvot, which means we are not ultra-Orthodox, but we are extremely observant extremely observant, raised up in Torah, you know. Under so the observant of all of the feasts all, and no, festivals? No, much more than that. Okay. On the Shabbat, keep the Sabbath properly and not to drive on the Sabbath, not to light fire on the Sabbath, you know, really raising the tradition of our people in a very small, secluded, religious environment. Okay, wow. so we were ra raised uh, in this, this type of environment. I knew nothing about Jesus. I knew nothing of Christianity whatsoever. So you didn't even, I mean, you didn't even... You hadn't even heard about Jesus? No, I thought that Gentiles is a rhyme word to reptiles, okay? I oh, didn't no. know. You know, well, listen, we, we... Gentiles were like reptiles. Gentiles and reptiles, you know, that's I what... I've never heard that one before. Yeah, no, look, I'm not... Uh, but they taught us, listen, don't even mention this name. We're not even allowed to say... I, I never... This name never crossed my lips until I was much older. Wow. Uh, I call him that man. That man. That okay, man. so when did you first really... 
hear about Jesus. You know what? I wanted to be the round night table so bad in the Feast of Purim that it's funny, it's, it's happening this week. And my mother ran to my school said, I found you a custom of how to round now a table. Go to the end of the, the outskirts of the city. When I got there, they gave me the shiny, the shiny thing and the armor and everything. They said, I have a gift for you, the tailors. And they gave me the sword and the armor. And guess what was on the armor? It was a cross. I saw the cross and I don't know what happened to me. I was seven years old and I start to weep. Wow. Weep and in horror, I said, how could you do this to me? We're Jewish. This is bad. So I ran to my grand, grand, grandfather's house. I told him about the cross. Okay. And he said, oh, he went in and talked to him. It was just a, a, a big mess. That's the first time I, I interacted. And then I got to my age of my bar mitzvah and I read about David. And I remember the rabbi stood up and says, David is where the Messiah will come on. He called the Messiah son of David. And that's what got, got me to think. And then later in my life, I walked by accident. Do you believe in accidents? I don't. No. no. But I walked into a place, I thought it's an Orthodox Jewish synagogue for crying out loud. And it was a Messianic Jewish synagogue. Wow. And you know what they were doing there? They were raising their hands in the Day of Atonement and they say, Yeshua, Yeshua. And I said, funny, I don't see the imaginary window. What window are they washing here? I didn't understand it. <laughs> what are they doing? He said, no, it, his name is Yeshua, because God will send us a one who will save us and redeem us. And that was the beginning of the end for me. Okay, what I mean, the end of finding the true identity of the Messiah. I said, it cannot be, who am I? The rabbis of Israel said that he cannot be the Messiah. His name in me, his name is blotted out. You want to tell me that he is the Messiah and the sages of Israel have missed it? And I took a journey of 20 years, 20 wow. years to find him not outside of Judaism, but from within Judaism. Now, Candice, I, I know this was unprepared, but I want us to get that clip about the 108 year old rabbi in Israel. And let's get ready to show that in a moment. While they're, and let me know when that's ready. In the meantime, tell us, this journey is going to be so amazing to our viewers that McDonald's, of all things, has something to do with your conversion and with this book. Yes. Tell us about your I, McDonald's I, I, dream. I, I, I had a dream, a vision. You know, I kept kosher. Why am I going to McDonald's? I have no idea. But in this dream, I'm walking to McDonald's. Okay, and I got one of these, not cheeseburger. And they things. had McDonald's in Israel, <laughs> right? Yeah. It wasn't a cheeseburger, thanks God, and I would be really concerned in the dream, but it was a regular burger, and I was about to eat it, and then God says, he hit me on my hand. He said, don't you eat this burger. Go across the street and have a filet mignon. And wow. more people are the female and filet mignon in this dream. It's really strange. Go there, there's a lot of Jews there. Go and dine with them. <laughs> and have this filet mignon with them. So I woke up in this dream, okay, and I realized God's agenda has not changed. Yeshua says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I long to gather you. You will not see me again until you say welcome in the name of the Lord. And I got up, I removed the scale of my eyes, is that sound familiar? And yes. I devoted my entire life, my entire life is devoted now to bring my people, our people, to the truth about the Jewish Messiah. Okay, so the interpretation of that is this. Jewish people who have not accepted Jesus yet, because they're going to, if they have not accepted Jesus yet as their Messiah, then it's like they're eating at McDonald's. If they accept Jesus as their Messiah and become fulfilled and completed Jews, then it's like they're dining and filet mignon at Amen. a fabulous steakhouse. Yes. What an incredible dream. The Lord's got a good sense of humor to use McDonald's in, in getting to you, what, didn't he? And by the way, you had something to do with that. I'm going to shock you on that one. Oh, you I didn't know and I... Joni had something even to do with this. I never shared it. But a years ago, we have done here in this program here, um, uh, the story of the Holocaust. You allowed me to share the story of my mother and this story touched many of my own family members in wow. Israel, okay? So we share their story. And you know, right before my mother passed, 
she, after 15 years of prayer, she woke me, she called, I called her in Passover. She said, Mom, I love you. She called me the next morning and said, I saw him. I said, Mom, who did you see? Who is it that you say? She said, I saw Yeshua, I saw Jesus. Oh. Yes, and his real son, I received him last night in my dream. Oh. Okay, don't you worry about it. One week later, she went to be with the Lord. Incredible. And you uh, have been, I, I want your viewer to understand, this is much bigger. You allowed me to share uh, several years ago her story. And He's that's that the is Holocaust what, series. The Holocaust yeah. story. That we did. Oh, my yeah. So yeah. this is what it's about. That's awesome. Joan, you got to comment on that before we show this little roll in. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, we did a series, a Holocaust series, on um, the Joni Show. And we were actually nominated for a mm -hmm. daytime Emmy, not just for Texas. This is the big Emmy, National, nation, national yeah. Emmy. So it was very, very touching, all the stories that were shared. And it definitely touches a nerve with the Jewish, with our Jewish brothers and sisters when they hear those stories. Yeah. You, you have a special offer that you want to make to people yes. who have friends or loved ones that are Jewish. Right. You know, Apostle Paul said that he's willing to be blotted out for the name of Yeshua to come out. We believe in all of our heart that Yeshua is the Jewish Messiah. If you have a Jewish friend today, if you have a Jewish neighbor, write us and contact us. We would like to send you completely free gift for them to give to them so they can hear the truth about the Jewish Messiah. So we would like to extend this special offer today to your uh, viewers here at uh, Daystar. Okay, there's the website. Go to that website write and, us. and Just write contact us. them and say, I've got a Jewish friend, I've got a Jewish relative, a Jewish neighbor and you will get this information free. Now, this incredible book, The Return of the Kosher Pig, The Divine Messiah and Jewish Thought, this would be something good for you to read if you have Jewish friends or loved ones, and it would be good to share with a Jewish friend. Now, there's five things, and I believe we've got the graphics on this, that, that, talk, that really show that Jesus is the Messiah. Let's talk about that real briefly. Sure. So what we have done in this book, I believe that 2,000 years ago, there's been a, uh, at the trial that Jesus was put under, was not a fair trial. So what we have done, we reconstructed the trial of Jesus. Okay? Wow. We reconstructed it in a Jewish court law. So, so instead of saying, I believe, I feel, I said, like most books will say, try to prove that he is, we brought in the first, the first segment called the framework, uh, we construct the, the trial with Jewish Jewish court law, Jewish witnesses, and Jewish framework. So I can say they think, they feel, they said. And who was the day? That's of the 2,000 years of Jewish sages. By the way, not all of them rejected Jesus as well. So, so the first kind of segment is us looking at the framework of the second trial of Jesus, specifically look at it through Jewish eyes. Okay, and then what's point number two? The second point is what makes Jesus different than, uh, than any other uh, messiahs? Look, it, the Jewish people had many false messiahs, okay? And Jesus is the only one who said that he is the one who holds the keys for eternal life. Wow. Where, so we look specifically at the accusation. What makes Jesus so hated today in Israel? So we identify and we read, you know, before you go to a trial, you have to read the, those who you accuse of of what he has done wrong. So we kind of put it, but everything done in a Jewish framework, okay? In a way that, that a Jew would understand it. And he says, look, if you've seen the Father, you have seen me. Those yes. are hard, if the baseline is the law, the Torah, it's a hard statement for a Jew to digest. And then we turn, our, uh, the, turn the attention to the evidence, yes. okay? Now here's the interesting thing. Anybody can read the scriptures in any way he wants. I remove myself from explaining the scripture the way I want to explain it. And I present the evidence for the Messiah through 2,000 years of Jewish history. And what we have awesome. done, uh, people need to understand the uniqueness. We went and brought something that was never available into English. Never, never, never. 
and brought it for the first time, the rabbinical writings in a simple way that people can understand, oh, to wow. the English language. I you want to read that. And you find that Jesus there is in Rosh Hashanah, in the Feast of Trumpet, in Sukkot. You find that even when we blow the shofar as an example, we call on the name of Jesus. Okay, point number four, secondary evidence. Secondary evidence. Again, we're going and we bring this kind of a supporting to the primary evidence, what we go through much more than even the Bible. We bring in historical evidence, external evidence that never been available, available in English uh, through rabbinical writing straight to the English reader to support the claim that he was truly the divine son of God. That yes. was what it was. So, and then point number five. We reconcile in every trial. Okay, the book called The Return of the Kosher Pig because the, the sages say, why is he called pig? Because he will return. The word pig and coming back mean the same thing in Hebrew. It's a play on word. Wow. Why the pig? Think about it. Pig is unclean. Why is he called pig? Because he will return to Israel and he will be kosher again to the Jewish people. Wow. Okay, so what we are doing in the very end, the conclusion of the book, you have to come with a reconcil reconciliation. We reconcile Jesus back to his own people because he's if not the Jewish Messiah he is nobody Messiah okay well here's the book the return of the kosher pig this is something if you're interested in your uh, Hebraic roots you're interested in Israel the Jewish people and you want to know better how to witness to them this is the book that you want and don't forget the website if you want if you have a friend or a loved one that's Jewish and you want to get free materials to be able to give to them, then you go to that website and request it.